Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on bitwise operators in Python. Now many of you requested for this video so I have clubbed all the bitwise operators together and we'll one by one take a look at each one of them. So as you can see on the screen we have six bitwise operators and before we jump on to the operators and understand what each operator does we need to take a look at what is one's complement and two's complement so let's start with that now how to calculate one's complement of a number let's say you have a number 253 what you need to do before you calculate one's complement is you need to convert this decimal number into binary which is fairly simple you keep dividing it by 2 till you reach 1 or 0 so 126 and if there is any remainder which in this case is 1 you just write it on the right hand side then again continue doing the same dividing it by 2 and writing the remainder on the right hand side then again with again one remainder 7 1 all right so you continue doing this process till see in this case you will eventually reach to 1 now sometimes in the end you might get a 0 also if the remainder final remainder is 0 so what is the binary of 253 you start from here and write this whole in reverse order so you will end up with 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 1 at the base 2 so this is the binary of 253 now if you have to calculate the ones complement of this number what you do is you simply reverse ones with zeros and zeros with one this is the simple rule for ones complement so the ones complement of 253 would be 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 this is the ones complement all right so far so good now if you have to add two's complement or if you have to calculate two's complement what you do is you simply add one to the ones complement so what will you get very simple a one this is your two's complement of 253 so that is how you basically calculate one's complement and two's complement of any decimal number or any binary number now why is this useful why did i tell you about this we'll take we'll get to know once we see all the binary operators how we work on them all right so let's move on to the binary operators first off we have left shift operator it is symbol is two left arrows which returns x with the bits shifted to the left by y places okay so for example let's say our uh, first example let's take three left shift operator two so what do you have to do is first you convert your three since it is a bitwise operator it works on bits you need to know the binary value of three that is one one now you have to left shift it by two so these bits will shift left by two and as many places you shift as many zeros you will add so this is the final value of 3 left shift 2 which is equivalent to 12 in decimal all right fairly simple let's take another example say you have 10101 zero, zero, one. again you have to do a left shift by say 3 all you have to do is just add as many zeros as there as the places you have to shift at the end that is simple shifting left shift operator now all these bitwise operator questions are quite common in any uh, examinations like mcat or co cubes you might see questions there so that is where it comes 
of use and there are other applications also where bitwise operators are used which we'll see in the last slide. Uh, generally while you are writing a program in Python you won't use much of bitwise operators but there are specific cases where you'll use them. All right. So let's move on to the next operator. Right shift operator. So what do you do when you say right shift operator returns x with the bits shifted to the right. In the left shift we shift to left, in right shift we shift to right by y places. So let's take for example 31. Now the binary representation of 31 is 1, 1, 1 and 1, 5 times 1. Now say you have to do a right shift to 3. Now which means is you will delete the left three bits. You're shifting to the right. So let's say if this is a wall and you have these five bits here, you will shift three bits to the right. So this is one bit shifting, this is two bit shifting, and this is three bit shifting. So what you're left is one one. Think of it like this. You're just shifting as many bits as you mention here to the right and whatever you're left with is the output. So when you say 31 right shift 3, your output is 1 1, which is equal to 3 in decimal. All right. Next up, we have bitwise and operator. Now, what does bitwise and operator do? Each bit of the output is 1 if the corresponding bit of x and y is 1, otherwise it is 0. So a very simple way to understand this is make this table x, y, x and y. All right. So both if you have 0, output will be 0. If 1 is 0 and y is 1, even then output is 0. If x is 1, y is 0, even then the output is 0. If both are 1, then the output is 1. Fairly simple. That is how you calculate your bitwise and operation. So let's say, take any random, say this is your x, and then let's say this is your y. Okay. So what will be the output x and y? Just simply see if the digits differ, it is 0. Only when both are 1, it is a 1. So the output is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right. Next up, we have bitwise or operator. Now, as we have seen the bitwise and table, we can quickly draw out the table for or as well. All right. So in this case, if both are 0, the output is 0. If any one of them is 1, the output will be 1. Okay, so again, let's take an example, let's say x and then y. Okay, so x or y will come out to be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So anywhere, if there is a single 1, the output comes out to be 1. Only if both are 0, the output is 0. All right, next up we have one's complement. Now we have already seen how to calculate one's complement. But let's say in an exam you have a quick question and you have to calculate the one's complement. How would you do it? The idea is simple. You replace one with zero, zero with one. All right. So the same definition is written here. The number you get by switching each one for zero and zero for one. Okay. And this is the symbol. So let's say you have to calculate the one's complement for this. It will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. All right. This is your right answer. Next up, we have XOR operator. Now this one is a little bit different from the rest that we have seen so far. So each bit of the output is same as the corresponding bit in X if the bit in Y is 0. And it's the complement of bit in x if the bit in y is 1. Now, this definition might be a little tricky to understand. What I'll do is I'll again make that simple table 
which is easier to remember always all right so if both are zero output is zero if both are one output is right and then if we have zero one output is one and if we have one zero output is again one so let's quickly see how this matches to the definition that we have given it says that each bit of the output is same as the corresponding bit in x if the bit in y is zero so when the bit in y is zero output is zero which is the value of x here also y is zero output is one which is the value of x but if y is one output is the opposite of the value of x so x was one it became zero x was zero it became one an easy way to remember this is if both of your inputs are zero output is zero if both of your inputs are one output is zero if your inputs are different zero one or one zero then the output is one all right so let's see one example see if you have a question six x or six what will be the output now you don't need to calculate the binary value of six and do this operation right because binary value of six whatever it may be is same as this so when you do this operation every time the number of bits will be same correct so let's quickly see the binary of six right one one zero so one one zero one one zero output will be zero 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 so any time you do xor of one variable with the same variable the output is zero and any time you do the xor of one variable with zero the output is the variable itself so these are two points to remember to get your answer faster in the exams fine now let's look at this interesting question what is the difference between 5 and 7 and 5 and 7 so this is logical operator 5 and 7 this is bitwise operator 5 and 7 all right so what this logical operator does is it's simply checking the and condition so if left hand side is true it goes on to evaluate the right hand side and if the right hand side is also true it simply gives the output as the right hand side right so the output is 7 but in this case 5 and 7 if you do this operation 5 is 101 and 7 is 111 now if you do 5 and 7 you will get back 5 that is the difference the output of this will be 7 but the output of this will be 5 now let's take some other interesting example I will deviate a bit here give you some interesting questions what will be the output of 5 and true what will be the output of say 5 or 7 what will be the output of 5 or false and what will be the output of false or 5 all right one more false and 5 so these are interesting questions for you to try out go log into your uh, python if you are using jupyter notebook open a notebook if you are using the interpreter open the interpreter and execute all these questions to check what will be the answer of all of these now questions like this make a uh, make good tricky interview uh, you know prelim exam questions like uh, either mcat or cocube or say your first round of any company interview these are kind of the tricks that you should be familiar with this, these questions tell that your concepts your basic concepts are clear 
all right now before we close like i said you want to use these operators in your general programming if you have to write a program to uh, say print the fibonacci series or check whether a number is palindrome or not things like that won't use bitwise operators but bitwise operators are useful in places like encryption compression and wherever in programs you have to do byte manipulation all right so if you are working on any of these areas you will find the use of bitwise operators all right with that note let me say goodbye to you i'll see you in another video soon thank you very much and have a good day